good to go. All right, excellent. I will call the June 27th uh, City Council meeting to, uh, to order. And if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Vermont is, at a, Addison County is on a severe sun, thunderstorm watch until 6.15 this evening, so hopefully the power will stay on. If not, the generator will kick in gear. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? Mel told me he wants to put one under D. We're going to name it D plus one because it's going to come before budget discussion. Uh, any other changes? What it is, it's about the stairway uh, that is adjacent to the falls. It's about repairing the stairway. That's what they. That's what that agenda item is about. Does anybody need to disclose uh, about anything on the items on the agenda? I don't believe there is. Well, other than there is something about the partnership, and I'm the president and of the partnership, but I'll refrain. <laughs> From folks. We bought in the heavy guns tonight, right? <laughs> um, okay. Um, we're going to go right to visitors. And uh, Danelle or Amy, I don't know which one wants to go first. Or you, you can, wherever you're comfortable. Okay. me to take the time to meet today. Um, for those that you don't know, my name is Danelle Byron. I am a local restaurant owner, um, Vermont real estate broker, as well as Virginia's resident. I was invited here today by Mayor Mike Daniels after a lovely meeting we had a few months ago to share a little bit more about the Economic Development Committee of the Virgin's Partnership, as I am currently the chairperson. Um, let me start off by reading to you the purpose statement of the Virgin's Partnership Eco Economic Development Committee finds new purpose for downtown's enterprises, helps businesses expand and recruit new ones to downtown, converts unused space into productive property, and sharpens the competitiveness of the business enterprises. And more recently, at the request of the Virgin City Council, the VP, as I'll call it, Virgin's Partnership, has taken on an economic development role embracing the entire city, not just downtown. Although the groundwork is not always visible to the general public, as many economic development initi initiatives and behind-the-scenes work often takes years to come to fruition, a great deal of the committee, which currently consists of Bill Benton, Anna charlevoix Zolette, Bob Furstein, Connie Houston, and Kevin Rooney, in addition to consistent support from Mel and Rennie, this all-volunteer group has spent countless hours meeting and recruiting prospective business owners that will complement our existing small and larger businesses improving the lines of communication with major Virgin's employers, exploring ideas for under and unutilized spaces and properties, supporting the other VP committees in their endeavors, and much more, all with the sole goal of maintaining and improving the economic vitality of Virgin's. Really what this hardworking group does is focus on making connections, as well as creating and maintaining positive relationships with current business owners, current property owners, as well as prospective business owners, property owners, and developers. Since the beginning of 2016, we have worked hard making about 30 connections, offering confidentiality in many situations as well. We have consistent open lines of communication with the largest property owners of undeveloped and underutilized properties in our city, and we are currently trying to match those looking to come and even, even or come here or even grow within Virgins with such property owners. One of the biggest recent accomplishments of the Virgin's Partnership Economic Development Committee is helping Bob Furstein and Lillian Kennedy secure a renter for the white portion of Kennedy Brothers. Jacksbury Cider, after considering Rutland and Middlebury as well, chose to make Virgin's their home um, with Shaxbury Cider, which is a nationally, internationally known hard cider operation. We came together, partnership members, city staff, local business owners and volunteers, sharing what makes Virgin so special and how we can all help assist in their success. Luckily for us, our city, it helped cement the relationship Bob and Lillian started and will soon be opening their doors 
they haven't already, not sure, <laughs> to their public tasting facility that we, so that we could all enjoy the fruits of their labor. A quote from Colin Davis, one of the owners, is as follows. We were attracted to Virgin's because it feels like a place that is moving forward with a sense of purpose. Everyone we've met seems sincerely excited to have us here. Another project we, along with the assistance of other city departments, are currently focusing on is securing the Neighborhood Development Area designation, also known as NDA. This is only available to designated downtowns as an add-on designation. The NDA program is a new housing incentive program that helps lower the cost to build housing in areas with an easy walking distance of designated downtowns and village centers. Whether it's converting a barn or a wing of a house into more living space, such as an accessory dwelling, or developing an entirely new neighborhood. The NDA program offers benefits to developers, such as exemption from Act 250 review, municipal permit appeal limitations, exemption from the land gains tax, and a state wastewater review fee limit to $50, just to name a few. This application process is underway um, for this designation right now. This, along with other residential development in Virgins, ultimately will add additional housing inventory in our city, in turn benefiting the grand list and our tax base. Lastly, in the coming weeks, we will be launching the new work section of virgensdowntown.org, which is our partnership website. Um, it's sticking with our header, headers of visit, live, and play, so we'll now have this work section as well. The purpose of this section of the website is to entice new businesses to re relocate or existing businesses to grow here and to make it easy for them to do so but by providing them with the info they need at their fingertips. It will provide statistical, demographic, and amenity information, local resources such as tax credits and incentives, local lending institutions as well as grant funding organizations, zoning and permitting information by linking to the city website, as well as inventory pages of properties for sale, rental spaces, and investment opportunities available within Virgins. Um, and that is something in the works. We should have that done in the next couple weeks, and we will be sure to send it your way as well. So, simple as that. Does, before Amy steps up to the mic, uh, does any have, anyone have any, on the council have any questions of Danielle? Danielle? No? We, okay. Thank you very much for your portion. Amy? Thank you. And thank you, Mayor Daniels, for inviting us here tonight to talk about the Virgins Partnership. I am Amy Vaudette Barr, and I have been the Marketing and Development Coordinator for the Virgins Partnership for a little over a year and a half now. Um, Danelle is just one of the many shiny examples of volunteers who I have the privilege of working with, along with um, our Board of Directors and City officials, all of whom are committed to helping Virgins. Um, maximize its potential and put its best foot forward, which is essentially what the mission of the Virgins Partnership is. Um, one of the challenges of a nonprofit such as the Virgins Partnership is to keep the primary focus on accomplishing your mission um, versus spending most of your time raising the funds needed to sustain your organization. So the financial support that um, City Council has given us has been invaluable in allowing us to prioritize our mission over our fundraising efforts, although um, we certainly do manage to do both. In the past fiscal year, we raised about $22,200 in addition to the city's uh, $15,000 contribution. About $4,300 of that um, money was solicited and earmarked specifically to pay for um, projects that had a fixed cost, such as the marketing video, uh, picnic tables in the park, um, the flower baskets on the bridge, and then the rest of the money was raised from special events and our membership appeal, all of which went into the um, general fund. So despite um, the obvious challenge of being an organization comprised um, solely of volunteers and one part-time employee, um, we really have managed to accomplish quite a bit during our last fiscal year, so I just wanted to um, share some of those accomplishments with you. Um, in addition to the economic development work that Danelle um, has outlined for you, here are just a few more things that the Virgins Partnership has accomplished um, this past fiscal year. Uh, the website, which hopefully um, all of you by now have checked out. The address is virgensdowntown.com. This is a website that we created, but it's really for Virgins. It's not meant to um, focus on the Virgins Partnership. It's meant to be a website for Virgins. So um, in addition to marketing Virgins to tourists and prospective residents and business owners, um, the website serves as a resource to those who already live here. 
we have a directory of um, services and, and businesses, as well as a local events page. Um, since we launched the, the site last summer, it has had over 10,000 hits and um, over 27,590 page views. We use Google Analytics, so we can tell that um, the most popular page by far is our events page. Uh, and what that is, is um, it just shows a variety of different upcoming events. So anything from um, the Junior Fishing Derby, to music in the park, to a concert in the Virgin's Opera House, to a workshop at the Bixby Library, will be on our events page if it's an upcoming event. Um, and residents have been telling us that they really appreciate that because it provides one source that they can go to at the, um, at the um, right, right at their fingertips that finds things going on, on at, a, at a, a variety of venues and hosted by um, a variety of different organizations. So I just think that it enhances the um, quality of life for people who live here. And just really quickly, I, I also wanted to share these tidbits um, with you. So out of the over 10,000 hits we've had, 80, about 8,100 have been from Vermont. Um, 1,117 have come from New York folks. 820 from Massachusetts. 483 from Connecticut. 212 from California. 164 from New Jersey. And the rest are primarily from New Hampshire, Florida, Texas, and Rhode Island. So those are the people that are interested in checking us out. Um, next, I want to talk about the um, free Wi-Fi that we've helped to provide. So um, we've, we've installed equipment down at the Otter Creek Basin to provide free Wi-Fi for any, anybody who um, utilizes that space, including the many, many boaters who, who dock here over the summer. And now, um, most, recently, we, most recently, we've also added some new equipment to provide free Wi-Fi in the heart of downtown. And there was equipment prior to that, but it just really wasn't working because it was outdated. So we have primarily two volunteers to thank for that. Um, Bob Feuerstein and John Sullivan did really 99.9% .9 of the work to provide that. We also want to thank Mel and Doug Hawley for allowing us to install the equipment um, on the Foots Insurance Building. And I think Matt Daniels allowed us to install some equipment on his home as well. So thanks to all of you. Um, also, I want to talk about um, the, the School Street project that the Virgins Partnership wrote a successful application and per that provided a $40,000 state grant to help make the recent School Street project um, a reality. And so this provided a new sidewalk and granite curbing and ADA accessible um, accessibility for the Boys and Girls Club as well as for Hired Hand Brewery. And um, that corner of school and Green Street now is really, I'm sure you'd agree, a lot more um, visually appealing and lively than it used to be. Uh, the building itself is much better utilized with the addition of Higher Hand Brewery, and it really couldn't have opened without the new ADA code compliant streetscape. So that's been a nice thing for all of us, I think. Uh, next is the marketing video. We, uh, we hired a company to produce a video commercial for the city of Virgins. It's really cool if you haven't checked it out. It's about a three minute video, which you can also view by going to our website. Um, it, we know that it's been viewed over a thousand times on our website alone, but we also know that it's been viewed over 20,000 times on the Facebook page of the Vermont Department of Tourism. So we made sure to share it with them and they posted it and it's been viewed over 20,000 times. So it's very hard to measure that sort of thing, but we hope that it will entice new residents, business, businesses, and tourists to come to Virgins. So finally, the last thing I wanted to mention was that we applied and were chosen for a six-month pilot program with Efficiency of Vermont that's been taking place since January. So it essentially provides um, an enhanced level of customer services to our residents and businesses. So while this has been going on, um, they have helped, they will be experts at Efficiency of Vermont, have held a variety of workshops and open houses. They've done some personal visits um, to businesses as well as residents residences and they have um, visited roughly 20 businesses and conducted 25 home visits to advise people about the ways they can save money by conserving energy and the Virgins partnership facilitated those connections and uh, organizing those those uh, efforts so um, we certainly do more but time is limited and those are the things I chose to share with you this evening if anybody's interested I have handouts that that lists a few of the more things. But again, I wanted to just thank you all for listening and let me know if you have any questions. Does the Royal Council have any questions for me? Is there any more? Just to be a kind of response. Um, 
or at least the council, there is this page and a half of uh, more specific listings of our accomplishments. So at least the council members should get that, and we have some other uh, available that if you want to look at it. Can you drop that smell in an email and, and we could? We, well, we have it here. You have it here? Yeah, we okay. have it here. Good. And Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to introduce um, a few of the board members that are here. Uh, we have Scott Gaines from Gaines Insurance. Julie Basel, Julie Basel of JNB Marketing. Julie? Oh, she did? Okay. <laughs> Carolyn Thompson, Thompson Law Offices. And Kathy Rossier, retired. <laughs> and very active. And of course me. Very good. For those members that are here, I would like to thank you for all the hard work you do. Um, I had an opportunity to fill in for Mel one time at, a, at one of the meetings and just was blown away with all the stuff that was going on behind the scenes. Uh, of course, it's uh, limited on what they can say because some of the activities that are going. Uh, so I have to respect that quite, quite well. Uh, but uh, it, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of balls in the air and how they keep them all up I'm not quite sure but uh, good luck and uh, if we can help you let us know thank you very much for a very nice presentation okay any other discussion questions from the council all right next thing we're going to do is ask for approval for the June 13th meeting um, motion Lowell motion, do I have a second? Second. Are there any seconds? Uh, omissions, corrections? Anyone? I have a couple. <laughs> Page two, Sam Fisher Memorial Pool. City Manager Holly reported uh, the same paragraph. Four lines from the bottom. Volunteerism is great, she advised but a bigger part is needed. I think what she was trying to say, but the city must play a bigger role or something to that effect. Next page, sewer department budget. City manager Hawley reported that there are six more years of a $123,402 bond payments I think that should read, of annual bond payments. Okay. That was all. Okay, thank you. Mark, did you have something? Oh, yeah, two. So, third page, towards the end of, the well, second to last line of the pool. Um, Sarah's here tonight. I would say Sarah's daughter, Maddie. Everyone likes to see in their actual name. And, her name, Print. well, we, we uh, told her, her, Madeline. her name is Madeline, it's spelled a little bit differently than normal. Joan has, Joan actually has the correct spelling, right, Joan? Yeah, Madeline. but I didn't know if the parents wanted their kid was listed, but I can certainly <laughs> put her name in. <laughs> and then administrator in zoning administrator appointment only has two eyes rather than three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's on me. want to check so your dictionary. It hit. sounds like you've uh, saved. Uh, it's a computer hiccup. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Okay, so I had um, Madeline and what's Sarah Hale's little boy's name? Kathy. Did ben, which one was it? Ben, ben was here, I think. I think it was both of them here. No, nope, just, just one. one. Oh, then it was Ben. The oldest one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ben. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So carries. I abstain. And ready to Even though I can technically vote. Yes. But I wasn't we, we, we have enough to make it happen. Um, thank you, Rennie. Um, any discussion, questions about the warrants? There's uh, two sets of warrants there, Mike. One of the reason is, is the sm small play. packet are actually some of next year's bills and uh, that we pay. There are certain membership dues that we pay uh, that are really due bef 
you know, well in advance of your next meeting. And so the accounting system allows us to keep those <clears throat> expenses separated. Obviously, the checks are cut and gets taken out of our account, but it does not hit our, our current budget. So there's, so there's two sets of warrants. We're kind of on the front end. Usually when we get to the, uh, what you'll get used to having two sets of warrants because when we get into July, there's bills that come in that are really June's. So you'll end up with um, a set of bills that are covering the prior fiscal year as well. You couldn't talk a few seconds longer? <laughs> I could, don't get me started. <laughs> I'm gonna get you wound down at the other end. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. Uh, now we'll go to citizens' comments uh, on issues that are not otherwise on the agenda. Are anyone in the uh, audience that would like to offer anything? Ladies first. Then. Sarah Cowan, um, citizen resident of Virgins. Uh, I am the treasurer of the Addison County Economic Development Board, and sorry, I stand. Um, and I wanted to come in support of for Jen's continuing to support the Addison County Economic Development Corp um, with its annual uh, payment to um, the Development Corp. In the past, it's been three thousand dollars. And we would like to ask that the city continue to support ACDC at that level. Um, I was thrilled to hear what the partnership is doing. The Economic Development Committee from the partnership is, is doing wonderful work. And I think in addition to that, it's important to recognize that we have um, large businesses here in Virgins, um, most of whom are represented here. Um, Mark Bellinger is the chief engineer at, at UTC, and Chris Knapp is the CFO at Country Home Products. And the partnership is doing fantastic work in trying to attract new businesses, trying to fill space, et cetera. And I think it's important to note that ACDC has also participated in a number of the events that were discussed by Dan Al. Um, but also I think it's important to note that ACDC recognizes the incredible importance of the large employers that Virgins has and, um, and the importance that they not only bring to Virgins but also the county as a whole. Um, the organization, our executive director, is acutely aware that our largest employers now are no longer locally owned. There are a lot of discussions going on both within our organization, within our board, about how to make sure that these, that these businesses stay here in Virginia and continue to offer the excellent employment that they do. Um, we have excellent represent, representation from ACEDC at a state level. Our executive director is very involved and has been um, ever since she was hired uh, in, in a lot of state efforts. And those efforts are bringing both uh, support to our large employers but also to the, the vast number of employers uh, and businesses in our county. And so I'm just here to please think hard about the economic development support that you can provide not only locally to this fantastic organization, but to our county as a whole. It's critical. It's, it's not just one effort. It takes a village. It takes all of us. It takes a city. It takes a county to make these things happen. And, uh, and I think that we can all contribute both at a, at a wider level. We serve different purposes, but we, yet we also serve the same purpose. And I think it's important that we recognize that it's important to, to um, support it both at the city level but also at the county level. So, thank, thank, thank you, Sarah. You. That, that is an item that is on the agenda tonight, by the way. 
Uh, I understand that, but I didn't understand but that those, you could talk. No, what I said questions. is issues that are not otherwise on the agenda. So if it's something that's not on the agenda, that's what we want to hear about at this point. Okay. And then, it, and then the comments could be made at but you've already made your comments. Oh, then That's I won't right. talk then. <laughs> so I'll, I'll wait until we get to that. One. Thank you. No. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long evening as it is, but we want to take and move along as quickly as we can because there's a lot of stuff, and most important is the budget get passed. Um, and thank you for your patience. Um, <clears throat> anyone else that needs to speak on any other issues that are not on the agenda? Okay, very good. Uh, we're going to go right to uh, business and uh, item A is which is a 2017 VTrans small scale bicycle and pedestrian grant. Yep, I no, wanted you, to, you want to do that? Well, I want to just hand this map around to, um, uh, to the board members and uh, uh, I, I sure do. I got however many you need. Uh, basically what this map is for I'm sure all of you in the back can see this map but this is a map of the city and the little yellow dots that are on there are just simply the location of all of the crosswalks on our class 1 roads our class 1 roads include all of route 22a and some of us old-timers that call it old route 7 uh, for the newcomers, there was a time that Route 7, there was not a Route 7 bypass, and Route 7 used to come from uh, New Haven and Waltham and come down New Haven Road and up Green Street to the traffic light. We often wonder what it would be like if there wasn't a Route 7 bypass. I think we'd all be stuck at the intersection. So anyway, relative, there's been a lot of discussion about the uh, rapid flashing beacons and and sure you know we'd like to just splash them all over town but there's a, there are actually warrants that have to be met to install a a rapid flashing beacon um, and the reason behind that is is that you don't want to be having these flashing beacons at every crosswalk because what happened is is they just kind of melt into the landscape and people don't would not give them any attention at all. So you want to use them uh, wisely and when they meet warrants. And uh, the way that it works is it's really a, like a two column chart. I'll try to simplify this, but uh, when our warrants met for a uh, for a uh, flashing uh, beacon, pedestrian crossing beacon is it depends on the speed limit of the road first off and the traffic count on that road and thirdly the number of pedestrians likely to be using a crosswalk so uh, i can tell you that for uh, in virgins uh, our all of our roads are either 25 mile an hour or 30 mile an hour and the chart covers for 30 mile an hour and less and they are only warranted on in a 30 mile an hour zone if there's more than 9,000 vehicles per day. And I can tell you that the traffic count on Route 22A is, is around 9,000 vehicles per day. So any, any and all crosswalks uh, on Route 22A, in my opinion, I'm not a traffic engineer, but more than likely meet the the warrants to have a uh, based on speed limit and traffic count of vehicles. We probably have some areas uh, on Route 22A that doesn't have the pedestrian count to substantiate um, a flashing beacon, but uh, that's something that a traffic engineer could figure out. So what this uh, now. Let's talk about uh, the other part of uh, of the Class One roads, which is Route Route, which is New Haven Road, veering into Green Street, coming up to the traffic light. And I can tell you that there's not 9,000 vehicles per day using that road. However, there are a lot of pedestrians, particularly young pedestrians, making their way to the elementary school and to the swimming pool, that need to navigate what many of us called the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, and so, therefore, that intersection, I, I think that uh, a, a traffic engineer, if they analyzed it, when you take all of that into, into account, probably meets the warrants. 
So when you add up all of the yellow dots uh, here, if you were to say, listen, let's just do them all, uh, you know, you count up the dots and there's probably 14 dots on this piece of paper. I, I should have counted them. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's around 11 of them. They do cost just for the for the equipment. They cost twenty-two thousand dollars per set. Oh, Tw I'm, for, I'm sorry, eleven thousand dollars per. Sorry about that. Eleven thousand dollars per set. Uh, but that is not the only cost involved with these things because many times there's work that has to be done on the ground to make sure that you have the proper apron and you have a properly designed and constructed crosswalk so that it's handicap accessible, has the steel plates. And so it's not as simple as, as purchasing the, uh, the uh, equipment and having Jim Lerrell and the crew come up and stick them in the ground. It's more complicated than that. So Amy, Amy and I have been working a little bit, uh, and Randy, I think you know, you've you're certainly been involved with this as well. We have an opportunity to file for uh, some money. Uh, the deadline is, I believe, the 15th of July. 13th? They're moving it. They're moving this thing. Uh, should we go to we, sh we probably should, okay? We're going to suspend that co uh, discussion right now because we're supposed to have a public hearing at 6 o'clock. And so I'm going to take and call that public hearing uh, to order. Notice is hereby given uh, that the City of Virginia City Council <coughs> will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 27, 2017 at 6 p.m. in the Virginia Fire Station meeting Room pursuant to 24 BSA 4385 for the uh, following purpose. Pursuant to 24 BSA 4384, the Planning Commission proposed to amend sections 1 1.3, 3.1, 3.2, 5.1, 5.2, and uh, the land use map and the appendix of the municipal uh, development plan. A copy of this is on file uh, at City Hall if anybody needs a copy of that. So, having said that, at this point, where's my friend? I'm going to turn, turn, turn it over to Sh Shannon. Well, it's, it's really if there are any questions or public testimony that anyone would like to give or, or ask about the proposed amendments, um, this is the time to do it. Um, Basically, we, we're, we're doing an interim amendment. Um, the, the plan runs to 2019. There were some things that we wanted to do in between time. Uh, we're, this does not extend that. We still have a, a more full plan update to complete by 2019. Uh, but essentially, what, what the, the main pieces that we were doing with this uh, were including the Virgins Downtown Basin Master Plan uh, as an appendix to the plan so that the recommendations that are contained in that now fall under the Municipal Development Plan and allow us to leverage that a little bit more strongly when applying for grants. Um, and that involves also the update to the community involvement piece. Um, we've updated the facility and services piece, uh, solid waste materials management to comply with what uh, state laws are, are now looking like. Um, we're proposing to update our energy plan a little bit to include a solar energy overlay district. Um, we've taken some of the, the pieces from the downtown basin master plan and taken the recommendation matrices and Im embedded those in there, which include things about transportation, et cetera. Um, in our land use, we're looking at um, going back to a prohibition of ground level residential use in the central business district. Um, the addition of the aforementioned solar energy overlay district. Um, there's two properties that are currently now in the low density residential district that we are proposing to move into the medium density residential district to comply with other areas that are adjacent to them. 
Um, and that's essentially it. Is there anyone here to make any comments or recommendations of change to what has been presented? If not, do we need a motion or anything to move this forward? Or what, what, what would you like? Would like is uh, uh, one thing, uh, the only thing that you, you can close the hearing, mm -hmm. and then under business you do need to schedule your, your next hearing. Okay. The, the if, if, let's say, if you heard a lot of testimony about, uh, uh, I will tell you that, you know, contained in here is a proposal that would, that will, if approved in its current form, result in a zoning change uh, uh, that will revert the prohibition of residential units on the ground floor. Right. So let's say if you had an, if you had somebody here this evening testifying that uh, that they don't support the planning commission's uh, uh, proposal to uh, to again prohibit resident further residential development on the ground floor, then that's something that the in the, the city district. council in the central business district that's something that the city council could. You know, have a discussion about and, and come forth with some uh, different language if it so chose uh, before you hold your second public hearing. So you don't have to, you don't need to take any action tonight um, other than close the hearing. I will tell you that um, I'm, I'm, that my notes got messed because your minutes to the meeting of November of May 20. Fifth or whatever clearly stated that this public hearing was supposed to be at 6:30, and I warned it for six because I thought that that's what Cheryl said. All right. <laughs> so I, you know, you know, one of the things that I would suggest that you not close the hearing at six minutes after six, just in case somebody didn't read the notice but they did read your minutes, and then you need to remember. If nobody else comes in, that at 6:30 you should make another announcement to see if anybody wants to talk about the proposed amendments. It would make me feel a little better because well, uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll recess that, and uh, I'll ask Rennie to be my time watcher. Okay. And at 6:35, let me know, and we will okay. then. Uh, if you can help me with that, I appreciate that. Just push this little center button and the uh, time will keep popping up. So, okay, so we will move. And uh, thank you for the, I uh, apologize for any interruption, but trying to stay on that schedule. And here's that 615 uh, thunderstorm they said was coming. So, so what, what we, uh, relative to the small scale, what we would like tonight from the city council is it could be one motion, but it's really covering two items, really. One is to authorize an application to the 2017 VTRANS Small Scale Bicycle and Pedestrian Grant for rectangular rapid flashing beacons on Route 22A and, I don't want our motion to say the Bermuda Triangle, but anyway, at the, at the, at the intersection of New Haven, uh, Green, and King. And I think, uh, Matt, I guess what I'd like to do is hear from you. I know you're no longer the chair, but uh, you know, whether or not, the, I, if I remember correctly, the task force recommended a certain number. It was either four or five or six, and I can't remember that number. And uh, because that's gonna determine what the project is that is gonna be applied for and the, and the budget for that project and the commitment from the water tower fund to represent the local share. So I would suggest that if it, if it was five, then I think that we should be budgeting $15,000 per intersection. So that would be a $75,000 project for five and commit, because it's a 50% grant for the small scale and commit $37,500 from the water tower fund as the local match. I, we have a sweet spot now which was four four units to be installed, yep. three on Main Street, one at Green and, and yep. um, New Haven Road. Um, 
Is that the only answer you're looking for? From yeah. Because I do have a question. Sure. Yeah. Um, when we solicited the support of local motion out of Burlington, um, they were somewhat skeptical as to the efficacy of the rapid, rapid flashing beacons, as well as the kind of hoops that were, the city would be required from a from the state, I guess, yeah. uh, in order to install. Do we feel that those are not a concern for us, or? Well, the I can tell you the small scale bicycle and ped program is considerably easier than the the normal, right, David? <laughs> David Crawford in the back. It's considerably, it's considerably different, right? Great. But it's not to say that there's no string. So, David could David's doing some work for us, yep. obviously somewhat related to this program. Yep. And so I hear what you're saying about your concern is, you know, time and complication and should we just go it alone? I I feel as if it's simple, it's it's worth going after the money. That's my that's my sense. Especially if we get a fifty percent more. Oh absolutely but, it was the yeah. number one recommendation coming out of the task force. Uh, so I, Jason I absolutely from support it. Of motion uh, has emailed me and said he's very busy and uh, it's going to reach back to us uh, in July. Okay. So and uh, so, there's more discussion that will be had later about that part. Okay. Uh, David. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear whether he. No, no, no. What what Matt? Because obviously, you know, the grant programs, you know, it isn't free money where you just apply. They send you a check. There are, you know, it's a process. It's a regulatory process, and in some instances, it in, it can inflate the cost to Correct. a point where, where like you know, let's just go it alone. Right. I I really think that in this small scale program for this type of unit, I think that it makes sense to to go after that money. Okay. Um, you know, but it, you know, you know, there's no question about it that you know it's it's probably will cost a little more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in staff time and, and in going through the, uh, the uh, request for qualifications, you know, there, there is that on there. But I, I think there's enough benefit to, uh, okay. to go through that process. Great. That's my feeling. So we need a motion to go forward with this uh, grant application? Yep. Yeah, I'd so like to make said motion, Mr. Mayor. So we go on four, five? Where are the where's the fifth one? Well, uh, you know, let, let's go through. The, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go through the ones that are that I think are clear. Yep. pretty clear. Bermuda Triangle. Yep. Yeah. Across from City Hall. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, South Maple Street, North Maple Street. Yep. That's one. And uh, McDonough Drive, South Water Street. Okay. There's four. I have two others that that do concern me. Uh, I think that uh, when you cross the the when you go across the bridge, there's three crosswalks across the bridge. There's one of them at Canal Street. Mm -hmm. There's another at White Street, and there's another at P Panton Road. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I, you know, I. That is the way that I drive. I see school kids waiting at intersections there. I, uh, I, I don't know that all three of them need to be done, but it would be good to know which one really has the, the that has the most pedestrians and would most benefit from that. From that, mm -hmm. so I would. That is one possibility of number five. Mm -hmm. I also think about. The crosswalk at the top of School Street. Uh, I don't know how many, how many uh, youngsters uh, cross there, uh, but you know, uh, I I see, you know, that that should be a consideration. Uh, but again, it may not have the pedestrian count. It doesn't have nearly the pedestrian count of some of these others. So. You know, I'd like to get. I really would like to get one on on the other side of the river because I think that there is a tra traffic calming benefit to them as well. Uh, uh, so that would be the the fifth one. I uh, I'm in favor of those. I see how they work on Pine Street. They work well. Um, coming back from a fire coming off Canal, I saw somebody trying to cross the road and 
traffic just would not stop for them. Finally, they did, and a similar situation happened yesterday uh, coming off north across Maine up past City Hall. So, I mean, it's catch-22. So I, I think that everything you've named is, is uh, some very good locations. And, uh, <clears throat> again, too much saturation. Uh, we don't want to send the wrong message. People shouldn't develop a sense of security with these things. They're a warning light to advise people that someone is there. You still have to look before you cross. So we have a motion. I will second the motion. We have a second. Mel, are hmm? for, five? Yeah, for five. Matt made the motion. Bowles seconded it. And any other further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So opposed? So carried. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Addison County Economic Development Corporation allocation. Chris Knapp wanted to. Chris, talk. we'll let you go ahead and thank you. Thank you, Mayor. So tonight I want to address you as the president of the Addison County Economic Development. Been on the board for about five years. Probably one of the best boards that I've been on. It's dynamic. We get involved in a lot of things. I'd like to hear the things that are going on locally. Sorry that we have not spoke, Danielle and Amy, uh, but I hope we do. Um, I also want to, I'm also on the loan committee. I'm the chair of the loan committee for Addison County Economic Development. Also been the CFO of Country Owned Products for the last 19 years. So, and I've been involved in a lot of things. We've gone here, we've made a lot of donations. I coached baseball. I was the chair of Boys and Girls Club. When it went through that troubled period, helped pull them out of that. So, I've been here for a while. So, first, let me address you as kind of the president. I want to separate my two roles here of, of what I've done. Um, I'm sure you're aware, as Mel's probably kept the board, uh, city council rather, up to date on what goes on with Addison County economic development. And I'm going to share something with you afterwards about this. Um, but Virgins has been involved with Addison County economic development since its inception, both in funding and board membership. It's been a partnership for a long, long time. You know, way longer than I've been around, probably one of the original members of the of the board. Um, Robin Shai, the executive director, um, has really transformed the organization since she's been involved. Her work has been exemplary. I want to repeat that. Her work has been exemplary. Um, even in the five years that I worked with her, the amount of days, nights, uh, weekends that we've worked on projects and she called me about stuff, her energy is just Amazing. Um, she's forged a really long term and great relationship with the city of Virgins, as well as the local Virgins business. Um, and because of her performance, there's, there has been and continues to be strong representation on the board by Virgins businesses. I'm one, Mark's one, Sarah's here, Sass is here. There's a lot. We have actually. Besides the two major employers that are in this town, we have eight other businesses that are members of Addison County Economic Development. Um, we've also made a lot of loans to local businesses um, that have helped them get through. So besides being the support that we have provided as Addison County Economic Development, um, we've accomplished a lot of things here in Virgins. Uh, we brought the Vermont Council of Rural Development Community Visit Program to Virginia, which resulted in Addison County Economic Development facilitating several meetings for Virginia's Economic Task Force, worked on the revitalization of the Falls Basin area and the creation of the Transportation and Park Task Force. In addition, Addison County Economic Development was part of the team that promote Virginia's and Kennedy Brothers, which led to the Shaxbury Cider location in Vermont. We've also made loans to help get Shaxbury here in Virginia. Uh, I was also, Robin was part of that master plan developed. Um, and as I just noted, our loan committee 
has made a lot of loans to local businesses to not only help them survive, we are a lot of times the stopgap measure to make them be able to get financing through other institutions, but also help them thrive in the area. Um, so annually, we file a report with the state where we require to with all our accomplishments. I'm going to give you the last three years of reports to get a better understanding for this city council have a better understanding for you as the mayor to get a better understanding of what uh, ACEDC has been doing. I think it's really important that you have a thorough understanding. Um, and this, Mel has got this report every year. I'm sure that you've shared it with the board, but I think it's important to get that. So in short, Aston County Economic Development has been very, very good for Virginians. Um, so taking, my, taking that hat off as president, and talking about myself as a business manager here uh, for the last 19 years, as well as a taxpayer through our business. Um, we employ over 200 employees, 125 are right here in Virgenz. Most of our employees reside in this Virgenz area or in Addison County. Um, they support property taxes, as well as support local businesses. Those 125 people got to eat somewhere every day. They got to buy gas, they get groceries, so they visit a lot of these area businesses. They eat in the restaurants, et cetera. Um, and as fortunate as it may be, recently in conjunction with our parent company, which is Generac Power Systems, we decided to close, based on really sound economic reasons, our Winooski manufacturing facility. I'm sure all of you heard about this on the news. However, we're very committed to keeping jobs here in Addison County, in Vermont, and preferably here in Virgins. In order to do this, to attract the type of talent we need, CHP needs a vibrant, thriving economy in Virgins. Because our attracting people, we've attracted people just recently from Iowa, Pennsylvania, Texas, California, I didn't even have the, the whole list of where we've been hiring people into the area. We're trying to grow jobs here. And a big part of that is saying, this has to be a thriving community for people to come here. They bring their spouses, they bring their children, they, we need to have jobs for their spouses. So, but all of these people are looking for an interesting place to live. There's a lot of states throughout the United States that can make the claim it's a great place to live. So some of these people choose to live here because there's a lot of good reason to do it, but we've got to make it into something that, that has that social economic background that they say, I got stuff to do at night, I've got places to go, I've got good restaurants to eat. This is a really important part of that relocation. Um, so the type of job, professional jobs we are and will be recruiting for in the near future really want, we need that type of environment here in Virginia to attract those people. So economic development is critical to the area. Um, and then uh, we see that ACDC, as wear my hat again, as the CFO of Country Home Products, is a vital part of that. It's why I volunteer my time to be on the board, to be on the executive committee, to be on the loan committee, and to be available pretty much you know, seven days a week for anything that comes up to help <coughs> us fulfill our mission. So, in short, um, I hope that the board, uh, sorry, I keep calling you the board, I'm just used to dealing with boards all the time, but the city council passes the support and continues the support for ACEDC. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? Young lady with glasses. Hi. I'm Scott here. Also know the young lady um, and I am here to encourage the city council also to continue the support for ACEDC. Um, I am a board member on ACEDC. I'm a local city of Virgins resident, um, as well as a business owner. I own Stonecutter Spirits. Um, I've actually had the pleasure many times of working with Stonecutter, um, as well as other local businesses uh, in Stonecutter and events and activities to present. Um, and the story I kind of wanted to share was that ACEDC was a huge part of uh, Stonecutter 
coming to be what it is today. Um, I started the company with my co-founder, and we bootstrapped it, and then we turned to banks for loans. Um, and the ACDC was crucial for that initial launch of Stonecutter. Um, in addition, they also gave us a second loan when we were looking to expand and grow. And I'm happy to say that now we're able to be doing events in my own community and to be doing events throughout Vermont. Um, and it really was the support of ACDC that really helped jumpstart my business. Um, on, a, on a board member side, I wanted to share that I'm particularly proud of the ACEDC for um, Robin's representation of our community, of Addison County and our community, in the State House. Um, I'm a young Vermont resident, and I'm so excited to see more working people in the legislature, um, people who are really closely connected to the economic development of the community that I live in, places that I work with, my neighbors, my fellow business people, that they have that voice uh, at that level, I think it's really powerful. Um, and I've been so impressed with the way that ACEDC has conducted itself as a company from the top down. Everyone who works there is so dedicated to making sure that businesses like myself and communities like Virgins have the voices and have the resources and have the connections that we need to build stronger communities and stronger businesses. Uh, so as a board member, as a city of Virgins resident, and as a small business owner, I really urge the council to continue the support for ACDC. Um, and it's really important and vital work that it does in our community. Thank you. Do you have a spot, Sarah? Is there anything else you'd like to add? I can't speak anymore. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, but I think it's really important that you hear this. This is, this is $3,000 for an organization that, when, when you look at this packet and you see what this organization does year in and year out, um, and the focus on Virgins is critical. Um, but Jens probably has the, the, the biggest voice on this board right now, and this board runs the organization along with the executive director and two part-time staff. And there are five board members, four or five, right in this room that have either live in Jens, <coughs> businesses in Jens, or represent this community. Um, and, and Jeff as well, representing city council, is, is now a member of the board. So I can't say enough in support of the organization. I have a lot, but I'd like to I could least of course. share this is the last three years of uh, annual reports. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion, questions? Any other comments? Hearing none, um, then need no, you got any comments well, you offer? one of the things, just so that you know, there's, there, is, uh, uh, there is an invoice in the current year's warrant uh, to release the $3,000 that, that was allocated out of the current uh, budget. Uh, you will not find my signature on that invoice. Uh, if the city council signs that warrant, that in that check will be released in the morning. Um, relative to my proposed budget that you will be talking about, and, and I just want to make that crystal clear to every everyone in the room, that when you get around to my proposed budget under E, I have eliminated the three thousand dollar payment to the Addison County Economic Development Corporation for FY 2018, and. Some of you may be wondering, well, Mel, what's where's what's the elephant in the room here? Uh, why would why would all these other organizations uh, be allocating the same thing that we've been allocating for a year, but you've put a zero next to Addison County Economic Development Corporation? And I would be very I'll be crystal clear as to why I put zero is. Uh, I was on the board. I was one of the original early members of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation. I spent years on that board. And they have done a lot of good things. But I ended up with a disagreement with uh, members of the board as to how they handled the executive director's request to run for the legislature. 
and I have no I have no problem with an employee wanting to run for the legislature uh, and if they win that's their decision and if they win they serve all right I have a major problem in in using city of Virginia's taxpayer dollars to fund uh, a nonprofit corporation whose executive director is going to the legislature and I just don't feel that it's appropriate and I you know, uh, you know, I hear SAS, I know SAS, you know, uh, SAS and I, we, we disagree. I mean, so that's, I, mean, I, don't, I don't mean to pick on you, SAS, but SAS and I uh, you know, disagree about that. She feels that it, she feels that the executive director uh, running for the legislature, you know, representing the town of Middlebury, you know, who's also the executive director of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation, she thinks that's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing at all. I, I think that, I think an organization like the Economic Development Corporation, which is an extremely small organization, it's made up of a full-time person and two part-time people. You, you know, so you have to have an executive director, you know, that doesn't have the time, in my opinion, if they want to remain focused on the mission of, of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation. I felt by running for the legislature and being elected, that the organization can lose focus. Now, you'll hear board members talk about how well, she, you know, she worked countless hours while she was there and, you know, nothing ever stopped and everything. And I, and I, just, I just don't agree with it. I, I just feel that in a small organization like that, you know, I, I, could, I could give an example, you know, you know what, if, uh, what if the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club says, I want to run for the legislature, and they get elected you know that you know her position is critical to the boys and girls club so i think in some instances i can see how employers you know understand why you know like in the case of chris at country on products maybe there's some employees at country on products that that he may feel could run for the legislature and continue to to fulfill their obligations for country on products likewise was with mark at utc likewise with sarah at national bank I don't, I don't uh, think that that was the case for the development corporation. So because of my um, disagreement with, with the board, I resigned. I just really am not going to go to meetings. And uh, I, I, um, I, I felt that it was best for me to get off the board because I, I just don't support it. Okay? And I can tell you, if the city council wants to put three thousand dollars in a budget, I, I'm on to the next project. Okay, I mean, it's not this three thousand dollars, you know, is not a big deal to me. All right. So, was uh, was I sending a message by putting a zero in there? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any comments? Um, I need a motion for or. Sure. I guess the, the thing that I really um, respect about the process in the board and the process that you guys have here, um, especially as it respects to the ACDC, was that like Mel had an opinion, I have an opinion, but the board voted. So everyone in the room voted. And it doesn't matter what I think, and it doesn't matter what Mel thinks because it's about consensus. And a strong organization that's proven itself year after year after year in supporting that community. I trust that board. I trust that board and the community in that organization. And so the board voted in a way that it felt was most fit. It didn't have anything to do with how I personally felt or how Mel personally felt. It was all the really bright and intelligent business owners and community leaders that voted to send uh, our executive director. And I think it's paid off dividends beyond what we would have um, and it's made our community stand out in the, throughout the state. We're now, we're now getting attention we never thought we would get. And I'm really proud of that. Um, and so I think it's important to remember that we trust the organization to really prove itself year after year after year. And there's one vote on one day about an issue that's really important to me and to Mel um, isn't representative of that, representative of the guidance Thank you, you, everybody, for your comments. But at this point, we're going to go to recess, sort of speaking, of this. 
and it's 6:35. Well, Andrew threw the high signing. So, in the suspense of everything else, this is just like watching a TV show. Everybody at home, just stay tuned. We'll be back to the commercial in a minute. Um, are there any comments on the public hearing notice? Not hearing any, we'll close that meeting. So we now have to, we, we, do we want to do it right this second, set a day, or for it? The That's next on one? your agenda. Mike. Okay, your Oops, excuse me. So okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, now back from commercial. <laughs> All right, uh, I need a. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to um, make a motion that we continue to support ACDC. Um, not only with the warrants that I believe have already been passed and signed, uh, but that the money be reallocated back into the budget for fiscal 18 as well. Do we have a motion? Do second. I have a second? Second. March 2nd. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. All right. That. Now, you can stop the now, not quite. No, we gotta, get there. we gotta go. We're, 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 we're gonna come down to that in a minute here. Uh, if anybody wants to stay, that's fine. If you're at a point that you need to leave, well, you, you may do so, but th we just got another uh, Vermont alert that thunderstorms are good through 641. Got another one coming through. So it may be safer inside than it is out. Um, okay, and so we're going to go to item C in business, allocations from the Water Tower Fund for the Virgins Partnership. Okay, so the, the reason why this is on the agenda, uh, let me tell you that in the past the city has allocated $15,000 uh, to the partnership and I will tell you that included in my proposed FY 2018 budget is a continuation of the $7,500 from the general fund and would recommend that the city allocate $7,500 from the water tower fund uh, as the contribution for FY 2018 to the Virgins partnership so that that will enable them to with that commitment will enable them to work within their budget, uh, both on an expense and revenue basis. So that's not something that's in the budget, we're just gonna take the, the money? The, you need to admit, you, okay. you need, the, the, the 7,500 is in my proposed budget, okay. and so obviously once, once the, that, if that remains in that budget, mm -hmm. that would be allocated. The water tower takes special action by the city okay, council. Okay, but that's additional. That's correct. Okay. That's Just correct. So 75 from both, one from budget, one from Correct. Budget. Okay. I will make said motion. We have second. a motion. Second. By Lowell, seconded by Matt. Any discussion? And this is how we've done the 15,000 before. Last year. That's what, last year. Yeah, I don't know how many years, but right. it's been a, a few years. Yep. It's a long time. Yes. <laughs> Any other discussion? And I will be abstaining from the vote. Randy will abstain. Thank you, <coughs> sir. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Um, okay, and the next one is amendment to municipal plan, the development plan. Schedule second public Schedule hearing. Schedule second public hearing. So the last time when this was do, was given to you, I believe the date was um, May 26. I think it was, and so you got that, and that's and you were you are not allowed by law to have a public hearing in less than 30 days upon receipt of that from the Planning Commission and that's why the public hearing was put off if you will to tonight that's your first public hearing so you are required to have a second public hearing and based on your schedule your next regular meeting is on July 18th and so uh, unless the board unless the City Council wants to make some changes to the proposed amendments you could, if you so chose, to, on motion, set uh, the date of the uh, of the second uh, public hearing for July 18th. I will make said motion. So second. 
poll, maybe we'll start a section? 6.30. Well, you t I'll, I will try to do better. It's, we're, we're not meeting the second, fourth. We're only meeting on the third, uh, Tuesday in July. How do we get the second and fourth down? <laughs> it's only it's maybe eight times a year. And, and I'm not going to be here. <laughs> Rennie's going to run the, run the program that night. So, unless they Skype me in, so. I won't be here either. Based on the testimony we have tonight, I don't think that's will you be here? Yep. Would it be better if we did it at 6.30 versus for you? Um, because we, we need, we, I would like somebody here. Yeah. Yeah, 6.30 Probably. would be better. I mean, I, I can we'll we'll try make again. it here by 6, <laughs> but I'll keep reminding oh, it. 6.30. 6.30, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I okay, so the meeting will be uh, July 18th, 6.30. Our public hearing will be July 18th at 6.30 p.m. Okay, excellent. It, it, all those in favor of that date, say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Okay, a proposed FY218 general fund budget. Okay, so I'm sorry about bombarding you with paperwork, but first off, no, I, I think it was 61 actually, but who's counting? Um, so let me uh, let me first off hand this out and what this is this is a revised police department budget the original uh, police department budget that was in your in my proposed budget that was sent out to you on Friday uh, I met with George this morning and went over a, a number of things and uh, uh, you know George certainly understands um, that we need to be careful about expenses and how it hits the tax rate. And uh, so what I, uh, the two changes in here deal with uniforms and capital purchases. Now George, uh, in his original proposal, wanted to replace the 2004 Ford Explorer that is on loan from the Sheriff's Department and replace that with a a new vehicle that would be to the tune of uh, $50,000. What I'm suggesting that we do is we not buy a cruiser this year. Uh, however, double up on the payments back to the continuation fund. If you remember last year, the city council voted to purchase two cruisers um, and in essence spread that out over a three-year period by paying $30,000 out of the budget and then borrowing from ourselves $60,000 from the Water Tower Continuation Fund with the intent of paying that back uh, over two periods of time. I'm suggesting to you to pay that back, not wait two years to pay that back. And I just want you to hold that thought uh, as, to, as to why I feel that that's uh, okay to do. Okay, so just hold that thought. One of the things, you know, Mark, I don't, it's okay, Mark, I want to talk a little bit about, Mark came and we spent a little time together talking about police department the other day and um, about certain things, and I, I want to just go over tasers, mm -hmm. Mark, just so, and because I, I wanted to get a little lesson about tasers because I knew that we'd purchased some in the past and I didn't have a really, um, I'm sure I was fumbling away at the question about tasers, all right, and I'm a, I'm a real supporter of tasers. I just am. Uh, I, I'm, I don't. I don't like guns. I like tasers, and I can tell you, I know how effective they are. You know, because I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of video about when that taser comes out. If you get hit with that, you're on the ground. All right, and it's. I, I don't want to say that people are more afraid of tasers than bullets. I don't want to say that, but I can tell you that if the taser comes out, they're extremely effective. You don't have to shoot them, just take, just take it out. Anyway, so the history is, is about, we think either five or six years ago, we can't remember whether or not we got a grant or not, but we bought five tasers, all right? And um, they actually were handled within the department. Everybody is trained to use a taser, but they're kind of handled like uh, you, would, you would rechargeable drills, if you will. So like when you got done your shift, shift you set your, your taser in there, and so it wasn't like issued per person. 
And, and so sometimes people would show up to work and they forgot their taser at their home and, and it, it was a little bit strange. So we bought five and then two years ago, we bought two newer models. And since that time, three of the five are shot they can't, and they can't be repaired. So we currently only have four tasers. And so what we want to do is actually, George requested five. I really feel that we should buy six. I want tasers to be standard issue to a police officer so that they don't, they bring their revolver home with them. You know, they, they go home fully equipped. I just think that it's a part of the issue. So what, uh, uh, from a budgetary matter, Taser has a program that if you turn in your old pays, Taser, you get $100 for this, you know, piece of plastic, okay? And they have a program called Taser 60, uh, where you, you purchase Tasers and pay for them over a 60-month period. That's what I would like to do, is, is buy six tasers. That gives us, the two old ones get turned in, so we end up with eight tasers, and everybody in the department is, they have a taser. So, so, brought, so Mark brought that to my attention, and so I immediately went from five to six uh, tasers. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, there's no budgetary, there isn't a budgetary impact there, but when you, the, when you take uh, my suggestion of not buying a cruiser but doubling up, that's $20,000. We went back through the uniform budget, Mark, and I think that mine shows that going from 10000 to 5000 And I will tell you that about half of that is used up with dry cleaning, but we really are all set with uniform. So I think that... I think we'll have to turn over in office or gain weight or lose weight, but that's, that's true. So anyway, those are the two changes. So I'm just going to set police aside for a second and go back to, uh, I want to hand out another sheet, which is an updated fund balance. Sorry about that. I can count to four. Two. In your packet, I originally sent out this kind of projection thing and this one is actually filled in uh, and so what what this report does is it in the general fund it itemized in our current year what our both revenue and expense budget is and over to the right hand column it shows you what our actuals are and as it uh, turned out right now we planned on spending a uh, hundred thousand dollars more than we took in in revenue when you adopted the budget last year and set the tax rate you used a hundred thousand dollars out of the hundred and eighty thousand dollar fund balance carryover well as it turned out we actually have ended up with seven thousand dollars more in revenue than expenses so we didn't use the hundred so we didn't subtract from our fund balance by 100,000, we actually gained another $7,000. So that's the good news. The bad news is I do not have, uh, you can go right to the bottom I do not have a lot of confidence that we're going to meet the level of delinquent taxes that we did last year, 60 days into the budget. If you remember correctly, we really did real well. I think that I think the number is either $22,000 or $25,000 in delinquent taxes six months, six, 60 days into the next fiscal year. I can't remember what we were started, what we started with, um, but I can tell you that. Uh, that $72,000 is really $75,000, right, Joan? Because that money is, that's an overpayment that we owe a guy, yeah. Mr. Black, okay? So it's not $72,000 in delinquents. It's actually $75,000 in delinquents. I, I do not feel confident that we're going to, that that $75,000 is going to turn into $25,000 60 days out. I really don't. I think we can get half of it, but I, I just, I'd like to, I, I'd like to say we're going we're gonna to get it all, but I just don't think that we are. I think it'd be too optimistic. So 
So I uh, predict that our delinquent taxes could go up $25,000. The accounts payable, uh, there are a lot of bills that come in and during the month of July for expenses in the previous year, i.e. electricity, phone bill, charge cards, you know, purchases that are made that maybe there's not a pack and slip made it to my office and, and so there are some bills and that I've estimated to be about $10,000. I will tell you that it could be more because I am waiting on the flagger bill and the grinder, the grinding bill and so that $10,000, it might even be twenty. dollars right? I'm still waiting on those bills, but I, I'm going to say it's somewhere between ten and ten and twenty. dollars So after having uh, done the... So now let's go back and talk about the budget again, all right? And if you look at my proposed budget for administration... Uh, I have a proposed budget of going from 384000 down to 380000 So that's just a slight decrease, and frankly, I'm not really sure One why thing, that's down. One thing that's not in there, Mel, is your and Joan's uh, in pay increase. That's correct. So That's correct. There, yep. We, need to, we don't have to make that decision tonight, uh, but that needs to be done soon as to what they're going to get for a pay increase? So let me tell you where the, where the chunk is of the 384 down to 380. It's all in City Hall building maintenance, going from 10,000 to 4,000, and that's because any additional work that happens at City Hall, I'm going to be coming to the City Council of a capital nature for allocations from the Water Tower Fund. So that $4,000 is really just a you know, fix the toilet, fix the furnace, pay the alarm system. It's not about, about doing the conference. It's not about that. It would, that, when we okay. move forward with that project, I'd be coming to the board with an allocation request from the tower fund to do that, to do that capital improvement. So that's where, that's how that is able to drop. The police department, again, don't look at what is part of your budget. You need to use the replacement page. And that's going from 866668 to the newer number that I just handed out to you of uh, 898600 uh, I will tell you that uh, the one, it, doesn't, it does move the numbers a little bit, uh, but we currently are operating, we are currently operating with five full-time officers and four part-time officers, and that's because we haven't replaced Brent Newton, uh, who got done uh, in May. And what uh, George would like to do to maintain stability is to, instead of hiring one person, hire two full-timers from, from our part-time group. And so we would end up with, instead of having six and four, we would end up with seven and two. All right, and so obviously there, you know, there's a there is a cost impact of adding a full time employee because of because of benefits, but it's not, um, uh, you know, it's not a uh, it's not a huge difference. And one of the things that can happen is if you become too reliant on part timers, you end up losing them uh, because they. It's okay if somebody wants to just do some part-time work, but there's some volatility there. So to go to seven and two, to me, brings greater stability in the department. So that's, uh, that's, what, that's what that's about. The Public Works Department uh, budget, uh, what I've proposed, there is some additional money for, uh, for sidewalks. I've left paving and, uh, and stormwater to the same, and you can see that that budget is up about fifteen or sixteen thousand uh, dollars. The project that I'm really most interested in that could come out of Tower Fund, I really feel that we need to do something with our recycling building, and it really it, it well it needs it's on my list to Sherma to be honest with you, Mike for Job Corps. I think that that might be a perfect Job Corps project. Um, I don't know if painting is the direction I would go in, but I mean, I, I really can't stand the looks of this, of this building, and something's got something's to happen. So I've got some money in our budget, which is really about materials. It's not about a lot of labor. 
So it's really more of a, it's more about the message that I'm sending you that I really want to do something with that building. It, it's embarrassing. The, uh, the uh, other, you know, the voter appropriations and the uh, other general expenses, obviously you need to move the $3,000. That number's got to change to 3000 And the long and the short of it here is, is that when you use the modified police department budget and then add the $3,000 motion that you recently passed on Addison County Economic Development, you need $118,000 of your fund balance to keep the tax rate at 79 cents. And my projection is that we will have somewhere between 142 and 152 and I can safely say that if uh, you, you've got, none of you have ever, we've never had this discussion. I talked to Mike about how, how we ever have done it this way in the past. I sure wish that we would have started talking about budgets at least a couple of weeks ago, not wait until June 27th. But uh, I, I do listen to y'all that, you know, that you all don't like to see taxes go up unless absolutely necessary. You know, you don't need to send me a memo about that. I get it. And so that was in the back of my mind that we try to have a budget that maintains a tax rate of 79 cents. And I actually, after working all day today, getting all these bills pays, making telephone calls, and doing all this, I, I got it. And I, that we're not talking about a lot of room here. You know, if you think about what we did last year, we had 180,000, we used 100, all right? So you got a $80,000 cushion, nice, all right? This cushion is pretty thin, okay? But I, I feel that, uh, you know, it's not like you would be adopting a budget or setting and setting a tax rate with red ink, you know. I, I think that you can do it at 79 cents. If you wanna, if you wanna spend more money, it's every penny raises $22,380 if you're interested, so. <laughs> One of the things that went on behind the scenes today is Rennie and I have been had a, a phone call back and forth and talked about some stuff and just want to bring it to the council and make it brief here is everybody knows uh, August next year Mel is retiring. More, he's, more he's, likely. He, he, <laughs> he's retiring. So not that the horse is out of the barn, but what we were talking about is the possibility of my idea was to try to bring somebody in a little bit early and if that was the case, we'd need some money in this budget. Rennie's idea was, uh, well, we could still probably see if we could compensate Mel in the rears of things to have him help with the following budget, the following year. So, I mean, both concepts are good concepts. Uh, we're going to start the hiring process. Rennie and I have agreed that we feel that after, sometime after March, we're going to start it if, if Mel's still thinking yeah. he's going to yeah, move, you know, we're going to start a hiring yeah. process. You know, we just want to we want to get a, a, a very qualified person and, and find out what experience they are and uh, the, the strengths, the weaknesses, so we figure out what and how we have to manage it. So no hiccups, no skips. So, you know, one thing just to kind of clarify, I haven't put in a letter of resignation, but what I have, what I have told many, many people that it just because of the way that my pension is structured it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to be working full time beyond my 65th birthday and for those of you that know me if something doesn't make a lot of sense i, I usually don't i usually don't go that direction okay hey, hey joan <laughs> joan you control the birth records right yeah. Can we adjust Mel's? <laughs> so I can tell you, you know, at this point, you know, because it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to be working full time when I turn 65, you know, in August of, yeah. of whatever, whatever year is it? 2018. 2018. All right. I will tell you that, you know, that just because, you know, even though the law on being appointed zoning administrator is a three year term, all right. I really fully intend to fulfill that three-year term. I, I really do, uh, and therefore, you know, I'm, um, 
you know, I, I remember Rennie, there was a time when, when I was zoning administrator and you were manager and you'd pop up in my office and say, Mel, who the hell was that such and such and such, okay? So I plan on being around uh, anyway. And uh, you know, you know, the city's never nickel and dime me and so I'm not gonna be nickel and dime in the city. I, I wanna make sure that, you know, this works for everybody. So I just wanna keep that in everybody's mind. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. All right. My my intent really is to is to stay here, and you know, I think that that's a you know that's a system that could benefit uh, everybody. You know, there might be some managers that really don't want the previous manager that close to them, and I can I can tell you for me, you know, I, Rennie and I work together well. I I like it that Rennie's a, a deputy mayor. There's no there's no anybody that doesn't like that, and it's because they don't have confidence or something. I, I want to hear from somebody that, uh, that has some experience. There's, there's value there. So I, uh, it, it, I think it will, will work. And I don't know how much it does affect the budget, Mike, yeah. but I think it's good to you know, certainly you know, have some plan, yeah. you know, some plan. Yeah. So, okay, so moving, moving back to the budget. Yeah. So yes. I'm uh, I'm happy to answer questions. I uh, about anything. I don't have any problem. I'm not married to these numbers. If there's things in here that you want to move and tweak and whatever, I'll I'll tell you what the ramifications of every tweak is. Uh, <laughs> so, Matt, uh, questions regarding the police budget. Sure. Capital purchases. Yep. Uh, Proposed at sixty thousand. That's us paying our that's just strict back. Strict buying, absolutely nothing. It's just paying paying ourselves the, back. The uh, paying the continuation fund back in full. Okay. Any other questions? Doing that early? Is there any reason? So what was the reason for doing that early rather than just doing what we had planned to do last the year? Two two reasons. One is I put sixty thousand dollars and then I continued to work. All right, because I wanted to see if I could get to a point, hypothetically, paying it back and having a tax rate at 79 cents. Because I can tell you that if I got done and it needed to be 81, I probably would have gone back and, and rethought that 60 and not been suggesting a, a, a tax increase, okay? So, you know, you know, I can tell you, you know, you, 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 city council said two years. I mean, you can make that 60 turn to 30 just like that, and you could cut the tax rate by a penny and a half. Or you could, you could move it from 60 to 30 and spend more money on something else. I mean, you, it's, it's totally your call. I, 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 so that's one of the reasons why I did it. The other is I, I, uh, I'm a pay cash guy. I can tell you, I'm not in, I don't, like loans, and I know, of course, I just barely talked about buying tasers over a five-year period, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, I can tell you that next year, you're going to want to buy a, a commercial cruiser, because it's going to cost you $50,000, okay? So if you if you don't spend the 60 now, you're got you, you're going to have exactly the same problem <laughs> next, next year. So I'm just thinking, listen, let's just bite the bullet, let's just get out of that debt, if we can do it and keep the tax rate at 79 cents, I just think it's, you know, just because, just because the city council made a decision a year ago and it was, you know, you know, city council wrestled with the decision. I think it was a well thought out decision, but that doesn't mean you don't go back and take a look at it. And, you know, what's uh, remind me, what's a penny on a tax rate? Do the, a penny raises 20, 22,380 bucks, something like that. Okay. The grant, the grand list did go up a, a tad, and our taxable grand list is is uh, it's really two hundred and twenty three million eight hundred and twenty seven thousand five hundred and forty six dollars. And if you multiply that times seventy nine cents, it equals one million seven hundred sixty eight thousand two hundred thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. And you may wonder, like, well, Mel, how come that doesn't equal the first line in the budget? And the reason is, is because we have to give VV2 the, some money back. Remember, we lost that appeal. And so the first check that we write in uh, July is a check for $1,120 and some change, and which is still not the exact difference. And that's because I'm trying to, f the state is still owes me a response 
because I shouldn't have to refund education dollars. But I so there is about we're either going to lose eleven hundred or we're going to lose you know five hundred in this deal. So there's just a little you know it's a few hundred dollars. And the school is not going to give us back the difference. But I you know but I will tell you you know you know that fund balance you know you you can't. You can't take that to the bank, all right? I, uh, you know, really, I don't know what, what's going to happen over the next 60 days. I have a pretty good handle on bills that are going to come in. All I can tell you is, is that if you adopt the budget, this budget, you know, and set a tax rate of 79 cents, you know, there's no, there's no cushion there, you know, and that's, I don't have a problem with that. I, I don't think that that's, you know, I don't think we need to be the taxpayer payer savings accounts, all right? But I, we don't like red ink either, uh, but that's pretty No, pretty I, tight. I don't think we should step backwards in any, any way, and I, I think what you've presented is, is very solid. Uh, you know, there's a lot of moving parts here, and so I'm um, kind of wondering what people's feelings are as far as uh, keeping it where it is or bumping it up a penny or two. Ready? Well, I, I have a concern because we th there's some money that is not in here, and that is for um, Mel and Joan's compensation. And um, you know, if we vote the budget without something in it, then at that time, if it's after the budget is voted, then if they're going to get something, then we're going to overspend. It, because, it is, yeah, and that's what we did in the know. current year, mm -hmm. and so yeah. it, you know. I hear you, Rennie, and, mm -hmm. and you know there was a time when you know, as you know, we you know we worked on our budget in the first part of June, and then at the last part of June, you know, they set salaries, and we made those those numbers accurate, and and you know it's it's you know it's okay, but there's no question there's you know, a few thousand dollars that you know you're 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 squeezing the delta between your calculated fund balance and what it ultimately is going to be. There's mm -hmm. no question about it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, I, but I also, I think, what, what the city council is well within its right. You obviously can't change the tax rate once you set it, but I think that you can change the budget. I just never, we just never did it. I think that, that really there's nothing wrong with the city council amending its budget in the July, all right, to handle those items, and that way it doesn't put the administration budget in a in a over budget situation, mm -hmm. right? And and if those numbers weren't done until the next meeting and things were retroactive back to yeah. July one, that would not, not be not a problem. An issue. Not so an issue. No, that's, that's doable. That way, nothing special. I think special that that's means. really the the auditors really don't like the way right. that this got handled a year ago because okay. we shouldn't be paid something that's not reflected okay. in the budget. I mean, we're we're being paid correctly, but I'm just telling you that the yeah. auditors don't. I know they won't like that. Then what we'll do, <laughs> what we'll do at some some point after we settle what the uh, increase will be, um, then we'll take and bring the budget back and. Uh, Amend it. Oh. So, so that's did. that. Oh, uh, that's right. Fire department, I, you can see. Uh, <clears throat> I think I gave you a sheet of the calculated contracts. I used $10,000, I believe. There is a little bit of room there, but I will tell you, you know, when you walk up those stairs out here, <laughs> all right, be easy, easy up those stairs. So there is a, there is a project out here that... You know, we need to do, and I can, you know, similarly, what I did with the floor upstairs, you know, don't be surprised if at some point, you know, I, I come to you that um, I don't have a number for you. If I did, I'd, I'd put it in, but uh, so that, that $20,000 cushion, uh, you know, really, there's a plan here uh, that we've got to do something with this, uh, with this stairway. Uh, sewer. I'm sorry. That's not the $5,000 $5, increase in station maintenance repair. That's not going to cover it. I, don't, I, I doubt it. I doubt that it will. Some of it, it may, it may cover some of it. <coughs> not unless we get a lot of volunteers and jackhammers. So. 
and sewer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll be looking at rates uh, at some point here. That 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 you, very that, that it's sewer, got a it's got a negative sewer. cushion. Uh, that in, sewer in thing sewer. Uh, is not something we're going to settle tonight, though, right? Well, I'm just uh, I'm just you know I've told you before. On the radar. You know, I'm not I'm you know you don't need to you don't need to change rates, uh, sewer rates for the next billing that Joan's going to do on July 15th. Yeah, but no, uh, but no. I really think that you're going to be talking about rates at some point during the ensuing fiscal year. Sooner than later. Ready. Do we uh, have any idea what the school will be coming through with? I don't think you got it yet, Joan, do you? School rates? No. Yeah, and so we not only do we not have the like school June rates. June 30th, there yeah. may be some like it. Yeah. Or 10. And so we, yeah, so we aren't, we don't have that number and also not that it's a big deal, but you know that local rate, which equals mm -hmm. lost uh, education taxes that we set, it's currently like, you know, 0 0.0037 or 0 0.0039. We have to calculate once you get that, once we get that notice as well. So yeah, no, we'd have nothing. In it. We used to have that way, way early. We don't, we don't have it. John will get that on June 30th. So there's not even any, any speculation as to whether it's going to be. Well, Mark might know, and, you know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we have a school board meeting tomorrow night. So. Yeah. <laughs> so the. We have to wait for all the budgets passed around the state too. That's, yeah. That's the other problem. Well, they don't. They well, the numbers freeze at some point. I know what you're saying. You know, I don't know who's left out there, but they don't get it to us early. Joan is spot on. It typically is right. And I think yeah. Well, in part, the legislature's involved. I mean, there's a lot of pieces. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't have it ready. We have. We don't. We don't have it. And this is a new year, right? Because this is going to be the first year of the uh, consolidated. of the consolidated uh, district. So, um, yeah, don't have any. Anything more, Mel? No, that's all I have. Any questions of Mel? Does anybody want to make a motion on what the tax rate will be set at? Don't all speak at once. You have to adopt the budget. motion. Don't you have to adopt the budget first? Yes, that's what we're oh, going to do. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, okay. Make the motion uh, to right. Thank you. Adopt the um, um, manager's um, proposed budget um, as presented with the change of the uh, of three thousand dollars for the economic development corporation and to and, and the police. Change, well, that, I think yeah, okay. that that's, that's considered okay. his proposed budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, and set the tax rate. The current tax rate is at seventy-nine, right? Correct. Seventy-nine cents. So that would be, uh, Joan, a general fund budget. <clears throat> I'm going to add the three thousand dollars. That would be two million two hundred ninety thousand two hundred ninety-one dollars is the general fund budget. Fire department budget, 165, 117. Recycling budget, 75,000. And the sewer uh, budget, 680,200. And the swimming pool budget, I think you've already passed already. I think actually you've already acted on you actually already acted on fire, recycling, and pool. I believe you already. I don't, did you? I know you didn't. I know you didn't act on sewer. We talked about it, but I don't think you acted. We, we had, no. Right. No. We have ready made a motion. We need. Uh, I think one motion is fine for the for the the budgets that you hadn't adopted before. Ready made a motion that we adopt the budget as presented, adding the three thousand. Uh, with setting a tax rate of 0.79 cents uh, to what? 79 cents. 79 cents. 79 cents, I think. 79, right. 79 <laughs> cents, yes. <laughs> it's past my couch time. Um, do I have a second? Mark seconds it. Open it up for further discussion. 
Hearing none, all those in favor? <laughs> oh. Yeah, sure. I just think that, you know, first of all, I thought, you know, Mel, for keeping us, keeping the tax rate where it is, I think it's very important to everybody who is in our community. I do feel that there's increasing pressure on the council and on city administration to do more. Um, the pool is, is a prime example. I know that been put to bed already, but at some point we're going to have to steer the bow of the boat into getting more revenue into the coffers to maintain our, our infrastructure and our assets. Uh, this may not be that year, but um, it makes it very challenging. I don't, I don't want to say no, no to the pool. I, I don't want to. I want to support everybody, um, but we need more money if we're going to be able to do that going forward. You're right, Matt, and not only the pool, there's many other areas, like you say, that just uh, would help bring more money into the city and help with taxes and keep the money local, but uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's a tight year, and let's, uh, let's see where we go from here, and uh, hopefully we don't regret, because we want to continue to move forward. Agreed. Thank you. And thank you for your comment. Any other discussion? I really would prefer to see at least a one or two cent increase in the tax rate, simply because, as Matt points out, we are feeling pressured to do more and spend more. And rather than coming back in three or five years and asking for 10 cents, I'd rather ask for two now. I don't want us to be in the same position as we were with the sewer increase, for example. Comments? But I kind of, I tend to agree with Jeff. I think uh, just bite the bullet now and and have a little bit more money in the, in the coffers rather than a little too thin. One penny raise twenty thousand dollars. One penny raises twenty two twenty two thousand three thousand. You know, it's twenty two thousand three hundred eighty three dollars. So a penny would. So a penny raises twenty two three. Thousand. So you know, two penny raise you know raises double that is, is, is you know forty forty five thousand roughly. Well, one of the things we talked about when we were talking at least, which is not part of this budget, but whether or not it makes sense to put out to the voters next time around to have a special fund created just for the vehicles and start funding that separately, so that we're not having to. Every, if we're going to have rotating every six years, we're getting a, trading in a new car. It might make sense to have something in place. Have you that, talked to the chief? No, I just we chatted yesterday yeah. and thought, and I said something about setting aside money if we weren't going to do it now, maybe a little bit here and there. And I said that would have to be a he, he special had, fund. No, he, he had talked to me when we were over meeting with uh, Northland Job Corps, and he had talked to me uh, about if. Uh, if it's going to take a couple of years to get settled in, and after that, it'll be on a set rotation, and everything should work out well. So, um, I'm not sure if that answers. No, I just your but but maybe not have the. <coughs> okay, so we have a motion that that uh, sets the budget, adding the three thousand and the tax rate at 79 cents. It's one motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to somebody can amend it. If, we, if somebody wants to amend it, speak up. Jeff? I would like to amend many, uh, Rennie's motion to raise the tax rate to 81 cents. And I'll second that amendment. OK. Would you accept that amendment? No, we're going to vote on that. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, okay, uh, we vote on the amendment first. No, we have to vote on the amendment. No, we vote on the amendment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor of the uh, motion of, of the amended rate to 81 cents, say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. All those in favor of passing the budget as presented not saying uh, the rate's already set. Say aye. With a motion. With, with a motion. Of the, with cents, the, yeah. It combines it. So yeah. With a combined, the motion or the budget as presented 
with the rate of 81 cents with the additional $3,000. Say aye. 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 Opposed? So carry. So the new rate is 81 cents. Everyone that is present voted in favor of those motions. Okay. So. Sure. But I really like the idea of increasing revenue as opposed to increasing your taxes. I think increasing your taxes is, it, it puts more money available for, for funds, but I think it's not very creative. I think increasing revenue is a, a lot more appealing to me as a taxpayer than just increasing our tax rate more. And, and, and I think, I think I, I'm nope. not opposed to what you're saying. I understand we've got to cover ourselves, but uh, increasing revenue always is more appealing to me than just increasing our taxes. One of the things that has been talked about uh, as far as the pool is related, uh, they have been some meetings uh, or a meeting uh, that they're, they're going to be doing some discussion as to ways that they can do fundraisings to help raise revenues. Uh, not sure where else in the city that we might be able to raise more revenues, but if anyone has any ideas, please. Uh, yeah. One of the, one of the things that uh, Mel, one of the, one of the things that uh, Kathy Ross here had sent to me is, um, and Mel and I started discussing, but we really haven't settled down yet. Just too many moving parts right now. We want to get some of the stuff off the table. Is Rutland has uh, created a means to, for people that wanted to make donations to a specific project, whether it be a pool, the basin, uh, whatever it is, the Boys and Girls Club, or whatever it is related to the city, they could make a donation through the city, uh, through, through the town of Rutland, uh, to help offset costs uh, that were incurred and hopefully making those more vibrant areas so um, we haven't talked about if we were able to do that how that would function because there's a whole another ramifications of how you would apply for the money and who would be able to get it and this spend it and this that and the other and one of the things we got to be careful of is every time you have a new fund it's got to be audited and it costs you money to audit that fund so we got to be careful But um, I really applaud the effort to increase taxes, and I, I, I think that it's not mutually exclusive with also increasing revenue. Um, the looking at the outlays for the pool over the past few years, 2016, 2015, 2014, Mel, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like there's a shortfall of about $10,000 a year. Um, so what we're talking if. If we're talking about increasing taxes to cover those expenses that we are not getting from pool fees, we're talking about a half cent increase. Um, if we have 2,500 for Jen's residents, we're talking about each resident um, paying on average $4 more to support a year to support our pool. Um, we already have a special fund for the pool as far as I can tell from the audited financial reports. Um, so that's it's already something that has to be monitored and that maybe could be a venue for people making special earmark contribution um, for city expenses. Um, but uh, I, I appreciate that the, the city council in our community seems to be, at least for the pool, going guns a-blazing in all directions, that we're going to put resources into preserving this asset if we can have new sources of revenue for the pool, if we can have um, a slight increase, a half cent increase in taxes to cover that $10,000 a year shortfall. All of those things in the short term might yield higher user numbers for the pool, a better pool experience. Um, but if the worst possible outcome is that we don't find that new money, but we as a community are um, creating a public asset for the families of our community to enjoy, I'm actually personally okay with that outcome too. One of the things that uh we're, we're going to be coming up is in August there'll be another city voice going out. We're going to try to get it out to more citizens. Uh, first one was 
didn't do as well as we wanted to to get out to as many, but it still it got out there and uh, it was very helpful and I did get some positive comments back on it. And I've already asked Mel to uh, <clears throat> his his article. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of his things, if if he accepts this uh, assignment, uh, is to write an article, 250 words or less. Uh, I have to throw that in there because I, I said I'll give him some of my space. Uh, as to where tax money goes, what do you get for your tax dollar? People saying, you know, we should be paying, taking this out of the taxes. It's like uh, everybody really needs to know what chunk ends up going to the, the police department, what chunk goes to uh, maintain the roads and this, that, and the other. So, uh, so stay tuned. I don't want to give the secrets away. Mel, Mel's got a lot of them. And they're all good ones. So I'm hoping that he can paint a picture so that everybody will have a real good understanding of where these tax dollars are going. And you know, everybody wants to come and, and say, I, I need, I, you know, I need a chunk, and which is all well and good. And we want to be a vibrant city. We got to just figure out. There's, we can't raise the taxes too far because if we go too far, then we're going to drive people out, out of the city, and our attempt is really to try to get people into the city. So uh, we, we hear you, we really do, and, and we're working hard to use a, a fiscal, uh, be fiscally be responsible and make sure that we make the right decisions. And we love input, but there's a small but here, and the small but is if you're going to take and throw a bunch of ideas out, get ready to help carry that ball to fruition because I maxed out on a bunch of stuff that I'm doing and these people here are maxed out on the stuff that they're doing. We need help. It's going to be volunteerism. It's going to help us succeed as a whole. So much for my promotional speech. Okay. So one of the things, you know, Sarah, there, there is absolutely no question that relative to the pool, I think everybody sitting around the table mm -hmm. clearly understands that the swimming pool, since the city took over ownership in 2010, has uh, derived its its derived its revenue from admission fees and passes. Uh, donations from the Fishman family uh, and and from the water tower fund and there's only a certain amount of revenue that's generated for, I didn't mean water tower I meant the watershed fund there's only a certain amount of revenue that's generated from that fund and we have tapped that uh, completely and so therefore you know the when you there there is under the current uh, scenario of using normal pool revenue and watershed money and looking at what the cost of operating operating that without any of even taking into account the in-kind work of Joan and me and Melissa and Rick and Jim and all these people they're really we're we're learned we've learned that uh, the the thought of not having a general fund supplement uh, you know we may be just fooling ourselves to think that, uh, that 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 day is fast approaching that that there's going to have to be some kind of allocation from the general fund I just I just don't see it so we we it's painful but it, we we know it you know we, we know that Mike we forgot to deal with D plus one. Oh, sorry so, about that but writing was keeping track of the time and, okay. and uh, so anyway uh, <laughs> D plus one is we have a contractor that's working upstairs on the floor of the fire station that is about that is about complete. And uh, for those of you that have have visited our stairway project, which is located adjacent to the the falls, uh, that project was one of the first projects that I did. Or I did. I didn't do it. But that I that I was in that I administered, if you will, a grant. To, uh, to construct the stairway project adjacent to the falls. So that was done, I'm gonna say, in 2009. If you take a look at it, it really, you know, uh, there's a, a lot of deterioration that has occurred to that stairway and, and uh, to the point that it's a little embarrassing. And we have an opportunity 
to use the company that's working upstairs to to put this stairway back in good shape, then it's something that we're proud of. And and uh, I don't really need to remind you that we we signed a grant agreement that said that we would take care of this uh, this thing. So we have a duty here to. Uh, to take care of it, and so the last thing that we want to do is is have a reputation that we're not taking care of facilities that we receive grant money to do. So I'm recommending that the that the uh, that $7,400 be allocated from the water tower fund. I realize that 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 typically the water tower fund is used for um, as matching funds and economic development and the like, but I. Uh, I think that this is a wise use of those funds. And we could turn to, there is still some room in the, in the watershed recreation reserve fund, but I don't really count a stairway. Yeah, it does lead you to McDonough Park, but I wouldn't call that a recreation program. Amy so, Barr runs up and down those steps. Does that count? For, that's, that's good for her. That's her recreation, but uh, I don't think it's community recreation. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm uh, requesting an allocation of $7,400 uh, to fund uh, necessary repairs to that stairway. I will make said motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any right. other further discussion? Very similar to the work of Mark on the pool. Would you do this for cheaper for us? <laughs> <laughs> Fingers just healed. Well, <laughs> well, actually, Perfect. keep him rested because he he knows you know we'll there's another uh, <laughs> another go around this fall or next spring. Any other comments? All those I'm good in favor. Okay. Okay. All good. those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Okay. Oh, Andy, how you feeling? Better? Oh, yeah. fine. Okay, so uh, I I really don't want to talk about budget report or fund balance report. I think I've talked enough about that. I want to move right to C. And uh, you know, David is a former city manager, so he just loves going to select board meetings and city council members, and so that's why he's waited patiently here. We wanted to give you. A little update of the of the this project uh, because it has changed a little bit, and uh, so I, I've done so much talking tonight. I'm really tired of talking. So, Dave, can you would you mind just kind of picking up the ball on this one here? Sure. <laughs> and one time. Gave up computing in it after a couple of minutes. It just <laughs> too much. <laughs> but very enjoyable life. Um, as far as the project goes, uh, it really is, we've gotten a good team going, and that's the, a major underscore of where we're moving forward. Mel has given you a little sketch of, uh, it's really a pre-conceptual plan. It's a, a layout of where the project uh, now is, is configured. And this was uh, a report that came in, uh, I think, uh, yesterday afternoon from Stantec. Um, and this layout has been endorsed by the state VTrans project manager and his supervisor. So the real change here is at the police station crossing the road, and this gets um, by the uh, DR building, which was a very challenging piece of this project. So probably it'll save some money by making the crossing there. It also lines us up if we want to think about where the uh, sidewalk is going, and presumably underneath the underpass someday, sometime, which is a little bit of a related project in the sense that we would suggest you thinking about uh, authorizing Mel to push the state hard. We've made an overture to the state uh, person that's handling the uh, sewer extension project and to try to get them to say uh, the sidewalk extension is not your responsibility or uh, as far as the local share, and it's not uh, Ferrisburg's responsibility, it's a station project responsibility. So I think that, that might get some momentum if you're so inclined to authorize Mel uh, to push for that. We do have a, 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 
a phone call on Friday that we're going to be asking the state where their funds, what's their plans for that, and to try to learn more about it. Um, the layout plan that you have in front of you, it would be very good if you can uh, indicate that it's okay, it looks like fine direction for where you're going, where you are at, for the board. And what that does is it moves the project to the next stage of a conceptual plan. And we're hopeful of having that conceptual plan back uh, in front of your board uh, being advertised for an August meeting. Uh, I think that's an important thing to try to the project Can you give me some point of reference sure. as to yeah. Mike just how is this doing that too? <laughs> what we're looking at exactly? All right. So, yeah, so basically, uh, you know, the, the dark, the dark line that is the proposed location of the sidewalk. So, in essence, uh, to try to get this thing in north, Danneker Chevrolet is here. Kennedy Brothers is located here. Uh, Amy's Beauty Salon is really the start of the project, and there's really a sea of asphalt out in front of Amy's. Mm -hmm. And part of this project really is that there be a sidewalk in front of Amy Salon, a curb cut leading to a parking lot mm -hmm. to the north of that building for four to six cars so that the, there is a single family, there's a, there is a dwelling unit contained with that building, but this way her patrons are not parking in front, backing out into Route 22A, mm -hmm. which is obviously taking your life in hands but also so it's accomplishing a, that part of the project is is accomplishing a couple of goals all right making it safer for patrons of Amy but also at the same time and having a safe route for pedestrians to make their way beyond there and to Kennedy Brothers to DR to the to the police station so, so this envisions a grass strip between the road and the, the five foot wide concrete sidewalk. As you get towards the entrance of DR, there is a large red building that is very close to the road. And when David and I and uh, John LeBurge and was John and Eric, or the gentleman from Eric from Stantec went out there, I think we all really came to the conclusion that extending a sidewalk along that red building, envisioning a, a road, narrow shoulder, curb, sidewalk. I ended up with visions of kids on bicycles. You know, the bridge already scares me uh, with this sidewalk, curb, travel lane, uh, you know, 53 footers. This is a similar situation, coupled with potential ice coming off that roof, also, when you get close to Champlain Discount Foods, if you look at it, it's a drainage nightmare mm -hmm. there to try to figure out how you're going to get a sidewalk through the utility poles and a drainage. And so we started to come to the conclusion of maybe, like, maybe we aren't going to bring this project to Champlain Discount Foods as the way we intended. And why don't we, and instead of making, here you're trying to improve safety when in reality you might be creating an unsafe condition. And so we kicked around the idea of saying, listen, why don't we consider stopping the project here and having a crosswalk to the south side of the police station. There already is a sidewalk in front of the police station right now. The other side of it is, is that if you, if you do extend the sidewalk adjacent to the, to the red building, and put a crosswalk there, I can tell you, people aren't going to take that route when they want to go to the police station. They're not going to walk by the police station and then walk back to the police station. They're going to cross just the way this is indicated. So if it meets the warrants, we would incorporate a flashing beacon pedestrian push button actuated if, if it meets the warrants. Mm -hmm. We would incorporate that into the project. And I can tell you, this is not about chasing money, but we're pretty confident that this project, which had an estimate of $305,000, you know, if you can imagine this, between project management, engineering, permits, 
you know, it's a federal share, it's, you know, there's archaeological clearance, there's, you know, this is not the normal thing. So you kind of like wonder, how can, how can a project of this become $305,000? Well, that's some of it, but I'm really quite confident that we're going to come under budget. City Council allocated 10% of this project, $30,500. I'm, I'm going to when we, if we can get all of the plans done and if the city council uh, ag agrees and sees the wisdom in basically shortening this project, you know, we will, we will proceed and, and continue getting the necessary permits and get this thing out to bid. And I'd love this to be the first project in 2018. I'm not going to guarantee that, but that's, that's our goal. Our, our, uh, this is not a five-year Dave Crawford uh, project here, all right? This is, we want to get this done. <laughs> you in favor? Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. You're in, you two are the mark, Mark? You're in yeah, the I just... Safety, you safety, know, just like the... The only, I think this, you know, one of the things that Jason had shared with us, again, from local motion is that one of the traffic speed mitigation opportunities is to do bulb outs at crosswalks that may be something we would want to consider on something like this. I do support the rapid flashing beacons, obviously, yeah. uh, but this may be an, another opportunity. The other thing we have to watch is where the state highway ends and stops. It's out there somewhere. It's a, it's, it, it's, it's it is. It, it's, I think it's, it is yeah. a little further down. Okay, so uh, yeah. we're, we're out of there. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah. Them. yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing, too, down the road uh, is uh, if we're going to try to put a sidewalk on the same side as the police station out to the park and ride, which makes sense. They may have to do some changing in the present layout of the lane because right now you're tighter to the north and really not enough at with, the underpass. At yeah. the underpass yeah. and not yeah. enough where you get a lot of space on the other one. So if, if there's enough tar there to macadam there that we can make a little swing in the chain, uh, the, the pitch of the lane there, it. it Plus, it's a little bit lower there, too. You could get. things on the table. We have this, apparently, and uh, I'd like to move this right along and say, uh, are people in favor of going in this direction? Yes. You know, we don't need a motion. I don't think so. I just, so yeah, every, every good. Yep. Yeah. Consensus, uh, you know, everyone is in favor of pushing forward, uh, and uh, that is what you need. Now, yeah. we don't have to talk to anything about the sewer extension or the, that, what David, that is. What David is wondering is you know, whether or not the, the, you know, relative to getting pedestrians to the train station, right? You know, I think that there is some, I think that there is some wisdom in getting pedestrians <laughs> to the train station. I, I you know, uh, it's not that there's a mountain of people living out there, but there's a bus stop out there. There's bikes out there. I, I think that it does make some sense um, to that. Uh, but having said that, I can tell you I can't justify using city taxpayer money to extend a sidewalk to the train station. So what David is, is suggesting is that the city council, you know, endorse or encourage the state of Vermont to consider uh, an extension of that sidewalk to the train station, to, and, I, and I'm talking about investigating. I'm not. I'm not talking about pounding the table. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that to me, this is an. If there was ever an opportunity to take a look at it, in light of the fact that you're putting a force main, a 1,400 foot force main on the same side of the road, mm -hmm. if That's there was ever a time, it's this. It would be this time. I don't know if. I mentioned, I think I did, that uh, I attended a meeting with uh, Amtrak uh, at the partnership. You were out of state at the time. Um, and uh, they plan on trying to come back in uh, 
passenger service on the western side of the state within two to three years. And they are foreseeing using the train station. Uh, I've got to set up a uh, tour. I have got contact information and, and I have a few people that are on the list that want to attend. I just haven't, I've tried to get some other stuff off the plate. And now I'm gonna sometime, probably be in August, do a, see about getting a tour set up for the train station because uh, uh, part of the economic development group was interested in trying to see if we could help get a, a resident uh, for that location because. Yeah, they, because basically uh, if some sort of, uh, particularly if it's a non-profit, <coughs> went in there, they can essentially have the, the, the space free. Yeah. Um, they would have to do some promoting of, of the area. I mean, it would be, almost be like a visitor center yep. as part of whatever they do. But they really want the building to be occupied. So. I may be mistaken, but my understanding was that it had to be a nonprofit resident in there. I, well, I, I think that under certain circumstances, you can. it could be a for-profit, but it would be pretty tight requirements with that profit, but definitely a nonprofit can go in there. I see. I think it in part deals with what's being sold. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's there I it's very controlling about what can be sold. I Even see. to the extent if it was a welcome center and if you wanted to sell CDs about something in Addison County, yep. right? I mean it is really regulated. Tight. But okay. I think that you conceivably you could pay market rent uh, you know for a use like if somebody wanted to use that as an office mm -hmm. you know but oh, it, it, right. it, it, they would pay market rent to the state of Vermont yep. you know, it wouldn't be a welcome center all right but you couldn't turn it into a coffee shop let me right. just let me just tell you that because of because of the restrictions of, based on the federal money that was used so it's it, it's really not a typical so move use. this to uh, to move this forward uh, do you need a motion well, well, to, or I just mean, a, does, again, a, of, a consensus of, of uh, is everybody in favor of uh, having the, the, them go forward, move yeah. forward, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, so what they can do to get this uh, accomplished? Okay. Yes. So, yep. We're the, in favor. The other, uh, and my last handout of the evening is, I mean, this is no action required, but I wanted to do, uh, this came in late this afternoon from uh, Michelle Eccles, and this is the, uh, First report, take care. First report of the pool advisory group. And I just wanted to let you let you have this, digest it, to let you know that this group is is Active. working. Mm -hmm. All right, they're working. Uh, I mean, Jeff, you you attended as you're not an official member, I guess, but that's okay. Uh, so anyway, I just want to let you know that the, this group is really doing you know, what we want them to do, you know, help us, you know, identify, you know, areas uh, that need attention. And some of these things, I mean, I've already, I wrote back to Michelle and, you know, some of these things, you know, we'll, we'll just do, you know, uh, but at least give you some, and they're going to meet again. This is not the last time you're going to hear from this group. You can see on the bottom, they plant, they have a, their next meeting is July 17th. So I suspect you'll get another uh, set of minutes uh, as a result of that meeting. So. I, uh, I think this is great, really. And, and one of the, I just want to point out a point of discussion that has, has come up here. Uh, it is un, of the understanding of Mel and myself, and I won't use the other person's name right now because uh, <laughs> they're researching for me, but uh, we have a different of opinion as to uh, whether they have to follow open meeting laws or not. So uh, we're still trying to get that weed out, weed out, weed out. So. Mark has got information saying that it does require. It could. It could. It's, it's okay. Definitely a gray area. I, I, I hope it doesn't because it's just going to slow down the, the process, I think. And uh, it's going to be, if we can go forward without that, I think just it'll, it'll keep Although interest. I, did, I talked to Michelle and she was doing this. And I had said, well, the, one of the reasons we were trying to let's say, avoid open meeting law, but have just a group come together so that they don't have to do the process of an agenda and minutes and all of the, the and she's going to do it anyway. So if she's going to write minutes and have, have the agenda, then there's not really much more to. Well, actually, I, I suggested that there be minutes 
Uh, it makes and, sense. And mainly, and mainly, I think it was important that if there are minutes, then that means that the the council, at the very least, and others would know what was being done, what is being recommended, why it's being recommended, and it wouldn't get lost. Because if you don't have minutes, then mm -hmm. all of that stuff gets lost. And, and I'd like you to know. see these posted uh, and, and available. So we're going to go through yeah. all those you know, I mean, we're almost doing it anyhow. Right? Right? <laughs> Again, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, it. but let's, it's, if, if it doesn't have to, but you do it, that's, you're on the plus side of things. And if it's available so the public can see it, it just, they, there's nothing hidden. Okay. It's a totally open agenda. Everybody's free and not trying to hide anything. It's, it's rock and roll. So, okay. Anything else, Mel? That's it for me. Okay. Uh, Molly, Cal, or Lee. All right. Uh, Citizens Advisory Council, no update. We're still hashing a, a few things out. <clears throat> Pedestrian Safety Task Force. George did say he would chair it. Um, so, um, he's going to take uh, lead on that uh, he's already made some notes um, of course the next meeting is uh, July 18th and I'll be in Maine and Rennie's going to take and hold it down hold the fort down and do things um, met with uh, Mel George and I met with Northland Job Corps had a very o open meeting and they talked about <coughs> their wants to helping the city and how we could pull together and bunch of ideas were exchanged uh, so uh, more information will follow we'll see where things go as as we the dust settles from that meeting uh, 34th uh, annual fishing derby was held this I gotta find the right pile of paperwork here guys and gals um, this weekend Last year, there were pedest yeah, participants. There was 242. This year, 225. We're down slightly. We're not, not sure if uh, Mother Nature had something to do with that this year. Last year, there was 126 fish caught. And this year, there was 125 fish caught. So it was close. I don't have the financials for the previous year, but uh, Joan did send me an email, $7,041. And that does not include some of the donations like Chester ice creams, uh, hot dogs, hamburg. <coughs> there was a bunch of items like that that were donated that uh, no, no cost was. So, I mean, total, it's uh, well over $7,500. So, and, it's, uh, and uh, these uh, Martha and Michelle <coughs> uh, really go out of out of their way to make sure that this, this is a big success and we're going to do an after action meeting uh thursday night at our house to try to talk about the weak points the strong points and and try to improve upon it for uh number 35 next year so um enough said with that um but i do want to thank marcia uh marcia martha and michelle and all the volunteers that did help I did see Lowell down there. He was getting ready to rock and roll a little bit while the band was playing, but uh, we held him back. He behaved himself. Um, the falls are lit. Lights come on around 9, go off at about 11.30. Joan, uh, brief, very brief if you could, credit card update. I have not touched it. Okay. okay. That's very good. That's my fault. I am just I'm right out straight. It's crazy. No, no problem. No problem. <laughs> No, priority, <laughs> budget. No, understood. So we are working that angle, people. So um, I'm sure there's other things, but in the uh, one late, lateness of the... Just going the, back to 7B, I was under the impression at the last meeting that you had asked me to try and find a chair, which I did. Oh, you did? So... <laughs> okay, who is it? Stacy Raphael. Oh, really? Yes. Good. She, she'll be it. George, will, George has got plenty on this plate. I know, I just, so they'll have to talk yeah. to each other no. and figure out, but. No, <laughs> no. and George, right. but George wants to be part of that. And yeah. so doesn't uh, Shannon uh, Mahoney. Yep, I think they. Yep. I just. Yep, no. I don't want to have to take something back that no, I. No, you don't. Said, do you, you want to do know. this? And she's I like, didn't I know. do. Stacey you know, I didn't, be, <laughs> might be delighted to have it taken back, actually. No, I, uh, I apologize. No, she's pretty happy that I had asked her for it. Good. So. No, that's, that's good, and glad to see that uh, we're, we're, we're getting more and more citizens involved, and, and, and we need to, because 
there's a lot for us to do, and I'm sure we can't do it all and still be uh, sane about it. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion, second. And Rennie seconds it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed be quiet. So carried.